Hey everyone, Vortex here, and today I'm going to be theorizing about the Keton, the mysterious three-tailed foxes that roam both Hyrule and Termina. While there's not much known about the Keton, I have been able to piece together a possible origin. The origin of the Keton is heavily steeped in Japanese mythology. The Keton are quite possibly based on the Kitsune, a fox from Japanese mythology with multiple tails. Stories regarding the Kitsune depict them as intelligent creatures who possess magical abilities that increase with age and wisdom. The more tails the Kitsune has, the older, wiser and more powerful it is. Some folk tales depict the Kitsune as tricksters. They manipulate and deceive, often for their own amusement. A Kitan will generally only appear if it senses another Kitan nearby. However, it is possible to appeal to a Kitan's sense of humor and fondness for trickery by wearing a Kitan mask. While the Kitan will not be tricked into believing you are legitimate, it will be amused enough to attempt to assess how knowledgeable you are. The perceptive nature of the Kitan cannot be fooled. They are said to be able to recognize each other based on the sheen of their tails, indicating there are subtle differences between each individual. The elusiveness and vast knowledge that the Kitan embody has enabled it to become a cherished character in Termina. The Kitan mask, modeled after the legendary creature, is popular among children and adults alike. The members of the Bombers mention they all have the mask, and their leader Jim mentions he's even seen a real Kitan once. But curiously enough, the Kitan manages to be even more popular in Hyrule. In Hyrule, Kitan is known as a popular children's character. If you talk to various characters around Hyrule Market and Kakariko while wearing the Kitan mask, you'll get many cheerful and excited responses. However, judging from those same responses, Kitan seems to have been introduced only fairly recently, sometime before or during the Hyrulean Civil War. The old lady in the market does not seem to recognize the character, while a middle-aged woman describes she feels very nostalgic while looking at the mask. Perhaps this means that Keton was introduced as a single character during the Civil War to bring some happiness back to the children who had to endure such harsh conditions. Notably, Keton is only popular amongst the Hylians. The other races show indifference or are bewildered. They do not seem to know what Keton is. The name of the Kitan seems to support this. It seems to be derived from the words Kitsune, which as we know means fox, and the Japanese suffix Tan, which is a term a child would use to describe a cute character. This raises the question on how the Kitan character could be introduced if the Kitan themselves seem to be non-existing in Hyrule. Since the Kitan are native to Termina, it would mean this aspect of culture had to be transferred by someone else across dimensions. The only likely candidate for this is the Happy Mask Salesman. The Happy Mask Salesman would have been a young man during the times of the Civil War. He had likely seen the horrors that war could awaken within mankind and sought a way to bring people together again. He decided to spread happiness through masks. His journey took him to many new locations, even parallel worlds. Likely, the Happy Mask Salesman had heard of the tales of the legendary Keton during his travels through Termina. The shrouds of mystery that surrounded the creature inspired the Salesman to craft a mask based on its likeliness, similar to the mask the Terminians used. The Keton's soft and approachable appearance would be perfect to bring some semblance of happiness back into the hearts of the children back in Hyrule. After acquiring a few Keton masks, the Salesman returned to Hyrule and gave the children the copies he managed to assemble. The love that the children developed for Keton managed to linger even well into adulthood. The salesman felt inspired and eventually would manage to find the funds needed to set up his own happy mask shop, a shop with only one intention, spreading happiness. Though profit didn't hurt, of course. While the salesman's intentions were initially all pure, over the years he slowly became obsessed with obtaining masks and happiness. Simply collecting regular masks was not enough anymore. He had seen the power that masks held on people during his travels and found himself compelled to search for better, more powerful and more dangerous masks. Regular masks may have made other people happy, but not him. His happy facade, despite his best efforts to conceal it, shows cracks when provoked. 
The salesman's obsession with masks and happiness had slowly set him on the road to insanity, visible through his bizarre mood swings, violent outbursts, anxiety, and denial of events surrounding him. Eventually, his travels led him to stumble upon a mask so malicious that it had been sealed in shadow centuries before. The hatred that radiated through the cold touch of the mask chilled the salesman to the bone. But he loved it. Perhaps now, the salesman could finally be happy himself.